All right, hey YouTube, we have been sitting in the aerodrome for a couple of hours now trying different ideas to see what we can squeeze out of a Druid build and make it as functional or hopefully more functional than what it was before. Uh, and I'm going to show you what we've got so far. So we, we've been taking notes here. I'm going to show this for a second. I'm going to get rid of this. This is related to an earlier conversation. We have made a build that... Let me try to explain. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the Druid build as it was yesterday when we were all trying it, we were all in Astral. Uh, we were running this trait and we were spamming, getting Carpal Tunnel, trying to keep that alacrity from falling off. Oh my god, this sucks so bad. So I was like, all right, screw that. What if we get rid of that? All right. If you don't have to go into Astral Form to maintain boons, what does that leave you with? Because if you can get out of doing that, you can save the Astral Form for the when the health bars dip, when someone goes downstate and needs Glyph of the Stars, or when you need to go Astral to do a massive CC with Astral 3 and 5. Because if we have to burn our Astral on a, like just constantly for boon upkeep, you don't have CC on demand, you don't have uh, Revise on demand, or as many, and you don't have huge heals on demand. So, can we get out of using Astral Form in a rotation? This was what we have found so far. Okay, so <laughs> stay with me here. All right. By using Invigorating Bond with a Pets F2 and also Verdant Etching with Glyph of Rejuvenation, we have permanent protection uptime again. Okay? Now, that means spamming this off cooldown, and that means hitting a Pets F2 every 20 seconds. Now, really quickly, that's not affected by Alacrity. So you, if you use a pet with a 20 second cooldown of its B skill, in, uh, you have Alacrity, the pet will be using its B skill every 16 seconds, whereas this still has a 20 second cooldown. So the most ideal pet I have found for this is the Blue Moa. Because the Blue Moa also gives six seconds of Alacrity. The Turtle would also be ideal, but for some reason it's kind of bugged right now. Uh, if I go to the Turtle and I hit F2, you notice I got some protection. I did not get... Vigor or the rest of the protection or the regeneration from this. Neither of these traits are working with the Juvenile Siege Turtle right now. If they change that in the future, the Juvenile Siege Turtle would be fantastic for that also. So for now, let's go back to the Blue Moa. So if we go in here, if you just uh, look at my boons, you're looking for protection. I'm just going to use a Glyph. I'm going to use the Moa Roar. And then I'm just going to use other things just to try to stay alive. And my goal right now is just to stay alive. I am not wasting Astral when I don't need to for boons. I'm literally just hitting skills to stay alive. So I'm actually going to go Astral right now just for purposes of survival. Um, the Glyph is almost back up, and we're going to do that again. And Prot did not fall off. It was refreshed. Swap back. The Moa skill's almost ready. F2, and there's even there's 23 seconds of Prot. It's fine. That's 100% Prot up time. So pet swapping between Blue Moa and something else. Blue Moa F2, proccing Invigorating Bond, and that Glyph of Rejuvenation, every time it comes up with Verdant Etching, <laughs> is 100% prod up time. All right. Now, because I was pet swapping every time it became available, I also procced Spirited Arrival and Lesser Call of the Wild. And Lesser Call of the Wild and Warhorn 5 is permanent swiftness, permanent fury, and some might stacks. Okay? So we got prod check, might check. Oh, sorry. Prod check. Fury, sp uh, Swiftness, those are all checked off. Now, additionally, by hitting a Pet F2 every uh, time it came up, we were proccing Rejuvenation. And we also get uh, some more regen by our second pet, the Fernhound. So the Fernhound F2 plus this is permanent regen. Even if you're not using Healing Spring, my beloved Healing Spring, I love it so much, regen is checked off. So we've got Swiftness, Fury, Protection, and regen checked off, and we have some Might Stacks. Now, I couldn't get Permanent Vigor back in this build. Uh, permanent Vigor with Sun Spirit... Or sorry, uh, Sun Spirit used to give Permanent Vigor. It doesn't anymore. Now it's on Water Spirit. And Water Spirit would take the place of the Glyph, which kind of screws this up. Unless you put Water Spirit here and then used a different Glyph that you were spamming off cooldown. But even then, spamming this and this for Vigor is like 95% uptime. It's not quite 100%. So I kind of was just like, okay, I'll just take that hit. So we lost a little bit of Vigor uptime. Um, but you could do that if you wanted to. Now, the end result, if you just you know, look at the rest of this here, what have we got? I'm running Marksmanship now for Lesser Call of the Wild, and Moment of Clarity makes our CCs hit much harder. Uh, Druid is one of the only classes in the game that actually has a trait like this. There's a couple of others, but not many. 
This almost doesn't matter. Uh, over here, you could use Wellspring for even more regen if you felt you needed it. I like Search and Rescue because it just helps revive someone in emergencies, and I like that. You guys have seen my vids. Uh, Spirited Arrival, Mandantory, Invigorating Bond, Mandantory. Here, you got two options. Uh, either your heal skill does an AoE heal, or um, going into Astral cleanses people around you for an additional cleanse, depending on the fight. So you could maybe make this default, but take this if you need more cleansing. Um, Verdant Etching, required. Uh, if we're not taking the Alacrity thing, then we would take Lingering Light and make our heals even better. And also, you can go into Astral Farm mu form uh, much more often with Lingering Light. Now, what is the net gain and loss here? Let's go back to my notepad sheet. You, have, you give Fury, you give 15 to 20 stacks of Might with this playstyle, you give Regen, you give Swiftness, you give Protection, you give half uptime on Vigor, and, the most importantly, your massive heals, your big Glyph of the Stars revives, and your big CCs from Astral 3, which are made larger from Moment of Clarity, are all available and on demand when you need them. How does this change your group compositions? You would need an Alak DPS and a Quick DPS and then two lazy DPS. Whereas before, it was one quick DPS and three lazy DPS. So you would need a light DPS and a quick DPS and five to 10 stacks of might from them. If you were gonna do that, you need to communicate with people. So um, a, a rifle engineer spills over some might. I believe heralds will spill over some mites, stuff like that. Um, but if it's a, it will take a tiny bit of extra work in making your groups, and I honestly worry that if people go for this, that it's going to uh, make a lot of people think, oh, Druid's the class that's just a pain to group with. Blah, blah, blah. But if you can find a couple of people that to accommodate this, you will have massive CC when it is needed, and you will also uh, be able to do those massive heals when they're needed, and you have almost heal scourge levels of saving people. Also, you have got... Additionally, uh, you've additionally got a couple of flex slots. Um, we're bringing Sun Spirit for Might. So Sun Spirit, Spirited Arrival, Lesser Call of the Wild, and Call of the Wild is our Might. Okay? Uh, and that's going to be like 15 to 20 stacks total. You will still generate Might when you go into Astral Form to save people. But if we're not wasting the... Notice my Might is going up. If we're not wasting the Astral Form when it's not needed, I'm not counting that in. So you can hit 25 stacks of might solo by using the astral abilities, but hopefully you can save those astral skills for when they're needed. So we got two flex slots here, not counting Sun Spirit. I like Search and Rescue. If we're taking Moment of Clarity, then Glyph of Equality becomes the strongest CC that you have in one of these slots. It becomes a 300 break bar break. Also, it stun breaks your whole team, and also it is more protection uptime, not that you need it at this point, and it also gives stability to your team. So that's really nice. What are some other things you might need? Well, if you're not using Healing Spring, you might need more Condition Cleanse. So Frost Spirit now cures three conditions in an area. You could be like, cure that area over there, and it will cure them uh, for three conditions. Uh, Signet of Renewal cures 13 conditions on each person within 600 range of your pet. You have to be very careful about this. Within 600 range of your pet, it will cure every condition off every ally. I strongly recommend if you do that, you pet swap right after because it will make them explode within like one second. <laughs> so you could bring one of those. So uh, you could bring Glyph of the Tides if you need a push or a pull for a specific encounter. Um, but honestly, I think my normal would look like this. I would have a quality for CC, I would have Astral 3 and then 5 for big CC, I would have Search and Rescue for emergencies, I have Allies Aid for emergencies, I have Glyph of the Stars for bigger emergencies, I have the big heals on demand. But it will take an extra minute when I am forming my group compositions because of this. So, um... I'm going to keep an eye out on things like Snow Crows, because I, I consider them to be smarter than me. Uh, and maybe they can come up with an even better build than what I've been able to find so far. Uh, this is what I have found so far after a few hours of testing with everything I know about Druid. I would swap out the Blue Moa for Siege Turtle once they make it to where Siege Turtle will proc Invigorating Bond and Rejuvenation on the F2. Um, and I'm currently running Monk Runes and Harrier Gear which has been pretty standard for Druid for years, if anyone's curious, and I'm running Transference and Concentration on my weapons. So that's what we're running right now. Um, I gotta say, if I'm in a group where I have to provide Alacrity and I have to go in and out of Astral as part of the rotation, this becomes so much worse. You won't have CC on demand. 
You will not have your big revives on demand. You will not have your big heals on demand. I, I just did fractals a few minutes ago with Druid as I was providing Alacrity, and I never was able to help with the CC bars almost. Unless it just happened to line up with the rotation. It was not great. And if I have to provide Alacrity in a group right now as the support as a Druid, I'm honestly probably going to swap to my heal mech. Which doesn't feel great, because this is my this is my beloved class. I love it so much. And uh, But I, I think what I'm going to try to do going forward for the near future is I'm going to play this, and I'm going to just try to find a quick DPS and a lack DPS and two more. And uh, I will be able to be a very god-tier support, but I've got to do that setup first. Okay, so that's it. Uh, this is just a quick notes video. It's just me sharing what I have found so far after a few hours of attempts. And I'm going to keep an eye out and see if anyone else can find an even better way. And if you've got any tips of things that you think I've overlooked, because I have been testing for hours in here, uh, you know, put it in the comment section down below. I will read it. Uh, I may not respond because some of y'all are freaking weird and you, you, you're like Logan and you like feet or something. I don't know. Not judging.